but this channel is definitely my main focus now. I'm aiming for three to four videos per month. And then <laughs> this video was posted exactly a month ago from today. Let's see how many videos I posted. Oh, that's right. Zip, nada, not one single video. But let me tell you why. Because two and a half years ago, I quit my job as a full-time Amazon delivery driver and said, you know what? I'm never working a job that I don't like ever again. I'm gonna figure out a way to make money doing what I love, which is video editing and content creation. And since that last day at Amazon two and a half years ago, I've been a full-time video editor for top YouTubers, brands, companies, and other clients. And this has been a very crazy month. And that's what this whole vlog is gonna be about, what it's really like being a full-time freelance video editor. And when I say full-time, I mean that it's been my main source of income. I don't have a day job, a part-time job, or anything like that. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that video editing and content creation is one of the most in-demand job skills at this moment. If you're a good video editor, you're in hot demand. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of these different platforms, it is a very useful skill. Every company, every brand, every person needs videos, needs media created for them. So it can be a very lucrative role if you get good at it, if you're a good person, and you learn some business skills along the way, and you go after your bread, you know what I mean? Stack that fucking cheddar, make that cheese, go after the bread, baby. So here's the thing, video editing full-time, especially freelance, is, is a very demanding job. You wear a lot of hats, you are kind of like a doctor on call at times where your client needs something, boom, you know, you gotta turn around with it. One of the beauties of it is though, you are working for yourself. As long as you hit the deadline and you do what you said you were gonna do, it doesn't matter how the fuck you get there as long as you get there, you know what I mean? That's about as far as I think I can get tonight. It's been a long day, my brain is a little fried. I'll see you in the morning. All right, we just made it to Austin. We're waiting for our ride. We're gonna go check into the hotel. Are you hungry? Yes. You're hungry? Kinda. You want some food? No. What's your favorite place to eat in Austin? That is one of the beauties of being a freelancer, or in my case, a freelance video editor, is I can work from wherever the hell I want. Most of the time I work from home because the expenses are low and I have my cool desk set up that I like and enjoy and where I can get in the zone. But if I need to go somewhere or want to go somewhere, I can, and as long as I bring my laptop with me and I'm, have internet access, because I'm transferring footage right now, as you can see from my hotel room after I just had a few drinks out at the Domain in here in Austin, Texas. So yeah, I came to Texas to bring my daughter back with her mom because she was with me for the last few weeks and I just went and had a few drinks with them and then I came back to the hotel to transfer some footage and wash up and I'm gonna go back out for the night and then fly back to LA tomorrow. Like I said earlier in the intro, as long as you hit your deadlines, you can work from or work however often you want. But I wanna share something before I forget because I'm about six white claws deep. There are two types of editors. Editor number one is the person who said, wow, editing is an in-demand job right now. I wanna learn how to do it so I can make money. Where it's more of just a job or more of just a paycheck than it is a passion. Then there's editor number two, someone who who is naturally creative, loves editing, came across it and said, wow, how can I make money doing this? I love it. But the reason I wanna say that is if you're gonna be an editor or a freelance creative person just for the paycheck, you have to ask yourself, how sustainable is that for you? Because like I said in the intro, this is a very demanding, detail-oriented job and there's a lot of constructive criticism. Think about this, your client's job is not to tell you how good of a job you're doing and how great everything was. Their job is to tell you everything that needs fixing. And if you're not okay with that, and if this is and something you truly love doing and can deal with, then it's not gonna last long for you. It's just gonna be a paycheck and it's just gonna be another job. But on the other side of the coin, if you're someone who is definitely passionate about this like I am and you deal with that constructive criticism, people, you know, you create something, you pour your heart into something, you spend hours with something and then someone just comes and tells you, change this, change this, fix that, do this differently, sometimes that hurts and you have to be willing to deal with that as well. There's really no solid conclusion or piece of advice that I'm giving you right there other than giving you some perspective or some insight on both sides of the coin to see whether or not this is something that you would wanna do and the realities of being a video editor full time. So if you're gonna be a freelance creative or video editor just for a job, just for the paycheck, ask yourself how sustainable it is. And if you're someone who's truly passionate about video editing or being creative, you gotta ask yourself, are you willing to deal with constructive criticism? Because it's gonna come and a lot of it is gonna hurt. But honestly, 
the demanding clients, the ones who are super picky, the ones who nitpick everything that you do in your creative passion are very much worth it. As a matter of fact, if you're getting into freelance anything or freelance creative, I would say go get a very picky client. That would be my number one piece of advice, especially in the beginning. Low key, that makes you a better editor or graphic designer or whatever the hell you are. Because there's been time after time after time when I've sent in an edit that I put my heart and soul into, and then the client came back and said, dude, this sucks. The vibe wasn't right. This isn't it. You got to fix it. And you're stuck going like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So you either come up with a better result or you don't get a demanding client, get a picky client because it's going to force you to get better. And the better you get, the more you can raise your rates. I've doubled my rates in the last year and it is incredible. Okay. I have more thoughts that I want to share with you, but I have a few more days to shoot the rest of this video. I'm going to downtown Austin to get drunk with my friends. And you know what? Maybe I'll check in with you after. So Okay, so hear me out. It is 11.49 US time, which means it's almost two o'clock in the morning Austin time. And if I told you that I'm not drunk, I'd completely be lying right now. Listen, it's two o'clock in the morning and I feel like this place is fucking haunted. It has to be 100% haunted. We're gonna start from the outside and make our way in, but just, we're gonna give a house tour. This is where the hotel room shines because here we have an entire kitchen. Not only do we have a whole ass refrigerator, are you kidding me? A whole ass refrigerator? Cause I'm an island boy and not a Honestly, we have a nice kitchen going on. Here I am living my best life and I'm having a good ass time. So I will see y'all in the morning. Peace out, mother fuckers. I just want to say shout outs to Daylight Savings Time and shout out to Vodka because due to Daylight Savings, I got an extra hour of sleep and due to Vodka, I have zero hangover. So here's the move. It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning here in Austin. My flight is at 1245. I'd like to be at the airport by like 1130. So that means I have like an hour and a half to get breakfast and get to the airport. Obviously, after I pack up and shit, not like I got a lot of stuff anyway. I even forgot toothpaste and I've been wearing the same shirt for the last three days. And when I get back to LA, the plan is my boy Adrian, whom you know from my previous vlog, is gonna pick me up and we're both gonna go to Micro Center in Tustin. One thing that you're gonna need as an editor or a freelance creative person is a good computer or a decent one. I've had a Dell XPS 15 that I bought refurbished two years ago. It was July of 2019 I got this computer. It's a solid, decent little laptop. It's got a 4K touch screen. I can edit 1080p video on there, no problem. I can even edit 4K on there. I played Warzone on it for like a year straight during the pandemic with Adrian. It's a really good travel machine for, you know, basic edits. But as of lately, I have noticed it being a little bit more laggy, a little bit more choppy, not only when I'm editing, but just like exploring through folders on my desktop and things like that. It's It's been slowing down a bit. So it's time I get a brand new PC build. I'm not gonna build it myself because I need a machine in time because I have a super big edit coming up next week and I need to buy something pre-built. So more information on that later. I'm hungry and absolutely depleted. So let's go get some breakfast and find out how I'm gonna get to the airport. Six hours later, I was back in LA on my way to the computer store with Adrian where I got a Dell XPS 18 some shit. I don't remember the name, but it has a 3060 Ti in there with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And goddamn, does this computer run smooth. Now let's talk workload and monthly expenses as an editor. My first full 12 months freelance editing, I edited about 160 plus videos across six different clients. That equal to about one video edited every two and a half days. Now remember, depending what kind of content you're editing, if you're an editor, turnaround times vary. For music videos, short films, you know, you have much more time than a couple of days to turn around a project. When you're editing for online creators, they have very consistent posting schedules, sometimes posting multiple times per week across multiple different channels. There's trends that they wanna hop on, like Squid Game, for example, a lot of a lot of creators wanted to hop on that. So the turnaround time is, is a couple of days to get things back to them. Now check this out. Just this year so far, from January 1st to November 17th, I've edited a little over two 
100 videos across only three clients this year. So my first year I had six main clients and this year I just have three. I actually like that because I have more work with less clients. That's less people to talk to, less business relationships to handle, overall smoother experience. And so far these last 10 months, I've been turning around a video every one and a half days versus my first 12 months was one every 2.5 days. So I shaved off a whole day on each project because I got better, my skills got better, and I got more efficient at turning around projects. And that's gonna happen with you as well if you're a freelancer getting just getting started with what you're doing or if you're a video editor, when you do it all the time and you do it daily, you're gonna get better, you're gonna find more efficient ways. And that's one thing I absolutely love about this business is that growth is inevitable. Now let's talk monthly expenses as an editor. This is really fun because they're so cheap. Now this is gonna be different for every creator and every editor and every freelancer. It depends on what tools you use, what subscriptions you have, do you have a studio, do you work from home, yada, yada, yada. My Adobe Creative Cloud subscription is $53 a month. My Storyblock subscription is $40 a month. I have a WeTransfer Pro account that's $12 a month. I have a vidIQ account that's 10 bucks a month. We add those up, that's $115 a month. Obviously we spend money elsewhere. You, I just told you I bought a new computer. The tower is down there. Sometimes I buy plugins and different presets. Uh, what else do I do? Sometimes I, um, so 115 bucks a month, really, that's that really ain't shit. If you have any questions, if you're a freelancer, creative, whatever, anything about editing, leave them in a comment down below. Subscribe if you like the vibe and I will see y'all in my next video.